if I can deal with Chael Sonnen, I can deal with anybody. You know what I mean? Chael Sonnen says more shit, you know. People, there was a streak there where people would call me and say, Chael just said, I said, no, that's not true. So Silva's okay and that is? Oh, he's easy. Yeah, he's easy to deal with. Very easy. Little odd. Very easy. Odd? Huh? Is he odd? You know, I, I always say this and it's the truth. It's the only way that I can really explain it. You know, I don't dislike, I love dealing with Anderson Silva. He's a great guy. He's an amazing champion. It's like dealing with an artist. That's literally what it's like. You know, you know, artists are quirky and they have their, you know, moments. Yeah. Peter, what did you think about Mark Anderson's whole situation? Did you know how bad things have gone for the time? I did not. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. What did you think when you guys know more shit than I know half the time? You know, uh, The type of guys who fight in the sport, they're, they're good people, they're mentally tough people, they're emotionally tough people, you know, it doesn't surprise me. These guys overcome tons of shit all the time. It's, it's what makes them, and these type of athletes, so special, you know? since before the Ultimate Fighter, through the Ultimate Fighter, and all throughout his career and his life. Um, every time Chris Lieben shows up and he's healthy and he's doing the right thing, you know, and, and I'm happy. Because I like Chris Lieben very much. He seems like a guy that you would never fight, but if he comes out and, and he does look sluggish again for a second time, like, would you have a conversation with him? Well, you know, I, I don't know. Let's see what happens on Saturday. And um, You know, he, he, he's a kid that... No matter what he's doing, I want to keep him motivated and, and and make it so that every day when he gets out of bed, he's a part of society and has to have something to achieve or some goals to, you know what I mean? He, I always want that there for him. So, but when I don't, I don't even want to talk about cutting Chris Lee. As a businessman, is it good to have someone who wins for that long a period? I, I mean, well, yeah. I mean, I, could you see goodness in, in losing? As a businessman, as a fight fan, um, it's awesome to have a guy who's as dominant as Anderson Silva. You know, uh, like the Mike Tyson of our sport right now. It's like, you know, so many people believe, you know, you heard some of these fighters saying stuff, but a lot of the media are like, Anderson Silva wins this fight easily. Anderson, and that's what it reminds me. It reminds me of the, uh, the Tyson era. Um, and I remember, I'll, ne I'll never forget it as long as I live. I mean. The night that he was fighting Buster Douglas, you know, I had so many buddies who were, you know, fringe boxing fans at big fights around whatever, and everybody was going out that night. And I'm like, I'm watching the Buster Douglas. Fight. They weren't watching. Yeah, they're like, yeah, that, that fight's gonna be six minutes. So meet us, you know, you can meet us after. And I sat home and watched for in horror as, for as, as the thing unfolded, <laughs> right? And you know, I think that's how it is with Anderson Silva now. Some people believe, but this fight here. This is actually a fight where the odds are lower than they've ever been, or at least in a long time. And a lot of people believe Weidman can do it. Weidman has the size and the style matchup to beat Anderson So you're Silva. not of the thought that a rematch, if he loses, would even be bigger. You, you, you're beyond that, needing that, but you understand why people oh, no. say, hey. If Chris Weidman wins this fight, the rematch will be huge. Yeah. Huge. Can you, can you talk about where Vito Belfort fits in in this situation? For the first time ever, I think he's actually stepping up and saying, I deserve this, I want this, you know, it's not just whatever the USC gives. But it sounds like you've got the plans. I mean, it's either a rematch if Weidman wins or a super fight if Anderson wins. So where does Vito fit in that whole situation? Because he has looked good other than the loss to Anderson. great. The hard position that Vitor's in is when you talk about a rematch for him, it's like you are not kicked him in the face in the first 60 seconds in one of the most devastating knockouts of all time, you know? So when you go back to Anderson Silva, who's in the twilight of his career, and you say to a guy like Anderson, hey, what about Vitor? 
I annihilated Vitor. Mm -hmm. I made it look like Vitor wasn't even a fighter. We shouldn't have been fighting or whatever the thing goes. I got other fights. I want to fight other people. And you talk about his legacy and his this and his that. You know, it's, those, are, those are tough fights to make. Vitor's best shot is for Weidman to win and win a rematch as well. And then maybe he could get Weidman. And I'm not saying that that's the case. Right. I'm not saying that Vitor couldn't get the next shot or couldn't be, uh, get a shot soon. But if you're Anderson Silva, you're like, I'm, I'm looking for another challenge. You know, I'm looking for, I want to fight GSP. I want to fight um, um, huh? John, Jones. John Jones or, you know, somebody different than, than Vitor. But it'd be a hard argument. Listen, if they had a, you, you, you'd make a better argument that Dan Henderson should get the next shot. You know what I mean? Yeah, he hasn't looked impressively, and he hasn't won, but it wasn't. He, he, he didn't beat him as bad as he did beat him. Dana, I know, I know Frankie has lost three points in a row, but why Charles Oliveira at this time? Why do you think that's the matchup that needs to be made for Frankie at this point? He's at 145 pounds, and, uh, and he's one of the best guys in the 145-pound division. Why not? Okay, what, do, what do you think he bring Oliveira? Oliveira has been unbelievable. He, he, he's, uh, you know, he's got unbelievable jiu-jitsu, and he's, he's become more and more of a well-rounded fighter. And, you know, if anything, if you're looking at why this fight for Frankie, the question is why this fight for Oliveira. Oliveira is on a roll. He's on his way up, and Frankie Edgar is the right fight for him at this time. Um, Slowing things down, Gary. Listen, I'm wearing a fucking shirt. Exactly. <laughs> Par apparently, apparently he didn't know we were in Las Vegas this week. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, oh, Dave, sorry. It's 120 good. out. He's got a vest and a long sleeve shirt <laughs> on. I bet you're moving slow. That's Garrett. Garrett's going to look good. Can I ask that question again, Dave, about why do you think so many of the insiders and the fighters and the, the trainers picked Chris Weidman over on this facility? Well, I think a lot of these guys have trained with Chris Weidman. They know the skill set he has. They know how tough he is. They know how big he is, how strong he is. Um, you know, and if you look at, uh, you have to look at a fight stylistically. It just like we were talking right when we walked up here, the confidence. This kid doesn't think he's going to beat Anderson Silva. He knows he's going to beat him. You know, and you take all that, combine it with the talent, the size, the this, the that, and, uh, you know, you, it's hard to call him a seven to one dog, five to one dog. And on the other side of the scales, are we not looking at an athlete from Brazil who is very special, who we will all miss so much when he eventually decides to meet Yeah, I think that's one of the things that people don't really think about or realize, but the day that comes when that man says, I'm going to retire, it's going to suck. It's a big day for you, though. Yeah. Isn't it? It's yeah. literally like when Jordan went away in basketball. You know, you, they had, you know, how many games do they have a year in basketball? Yeah. 80 something games, whatever, whatever the number is. Um, and you took it for granted every night that Jordan played, right up until he left. You know what I mean? And, and I think that's going to be the case with Anderson Silva, too. Hey, I, know, I know New York's not the issue right now, you know what, but if Wyman were to win this fight, how, much, how seriously would you consider a rematch in New Jersey? Yeah, we'd, we'd really consider it. You can go to New Jersey, you can go to Brazil, you know. A rematch for that fight, you can do Vegas.
her doom leaking stuff. <laughs> I won't have any regrets. I mean, I do everything I can to try to make the best fights possible. If I was sitting around on my ass not trying to make the fight, and then he, he lost, I said, shit, I never thought of this. I should have made that fucking John Jones fight, you know, or that GSP fight. I've been working hard to try to make those fights. You know, George St. Pierre, George St. Pierre would not even think about this fight because Anderson Silva's going to win, according to George St. Pierre. Now? No. But if you ask me this question two years from now and one of those two fights haven't happened, yes, that would be my answer. Dan, a couple more questions on Anderson. Has it become more difficult from your perspective as a promoter or easier to deal with as the years have gone by? Also, with the rematch calls, did you come up with that or did they ask you that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's all the same. It's, you know, dealing with him is, is fine. I have no problems dealing with him. And then uh, the rematch is a no brainer. Should Anderson Silva lose his first fight ever in the UFC since 2006, you're damn right we're going to do the rematch. So well, that'd be the case with Lewis. That's, if, if he loses on Saturday night, you guys can go out Saturday night and print. The rematch will happen. I don't know what the date will be, but it's coming. So will that be, but will that be the case for all of his fights going forward? For Anderson, of yeah. course. If he loses his first fight ever in the UFC, yes, the next fight will be a rematch. Never thought about that ever, not once in my whole life. Is Could it happen? Good? Anything is possible, but yeah. Dana, not to question George St. Pierre's motivation or drive or anything like that, but you've talked that you've tried to make that fight for a long time, and now he's you know putting Wyden out there. I've seen a lot of fan reaction that he's kind of putting a hurdle there, you know, a block there, like he's not the one motivated to make that fight. Do you sense that at all in negotiations that George isn't interested in having that fight? There's no doubt about it. I mean, it, that, that, that's a fact. I mean, if, if that was the case, he'd say, fuck Weidman, I'll take that fight, I want that fight. I really think that Weidman's gonna beat him. I don't want Weidman to have that fight, I wanna be the guy to beat him. Does that bug you a little bit, that he doesn't wanna make this fight, or do you understand where he's coming from with that? At the end of the day, he weighs 170 pounds. He's, the, he's 170 pounds. If he weighed 185 pounds and felt that way, I'd be uh, I'd be real pissed. But you get it. That but it's at 170 be a big pounds, and you know, any guy who's gonna fight up and wait, it's like, you know, you can't force him to do it. Yeah, it's well, it's you know, listen, I'm I'm the man here at 170. If I thought I was the man at 185, I'd be at 185. I get it. Um, but it's a fight that a lot of fans want to see. It's a big fight. It's it's a. Uh, it's a legacy fight, and it's a fight for the pound, for pound best in the world. And that's why you mentioned the catchweight this past week, that that would be maybe more ideal. Because in the past, you said it needs to be at 170 or 185 for a belt to be on the line. You know? No, no, no. I, I, I never I, said I, that. I thought in the past you said it, it no, needed no, to be for no, a title. No, no, no. Yeah, you said <laughs> No, 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 no. All right, we'll, we'll pull it out. <laughs> what and I said it was, if, if George St. Pierre, he said he if he made the move, he'd want to move to 185. Sure. You know what I mean? Right. Because he couldn't come back to 170 in the way that he trains and eats and whatever the deal is, that he couldn't do it. So that's why we talked about it. But it was always, for me, it was a pound-for-pound pound fight. Who's the pound-for-pound pound best in the world? You know, in like a huge legacy fight, who's the greatest of all time? What, if, what about Anderson, if it ended up being Anderson and John Jones instead? That's what I'm saying. Like, would that take place in between? Like Anderson, that Anderson could fight wherever he wanted to. He wouldn't have to be at 205, and it wouldn't have to be for a title. Like to be 198 or 200 or something. Right. And they could both hold their titles, or Anderson could go for it. It's up to the fighter. If they want to go for the... 205 pound title like George St. Pierre could do this catchweight fight and he could still be the champ at 170 you know but what's crazy to me is GSP opted to take a very dangerous fight at 170 without trying to take a dangerous fight at 185 which would have been a bigger money fight I'm sure oh yeah I mean definitely Ronda and Misha have both been announced uh, for UFC 168 is that going to be the main event I don't know yeah I don't know yet have you seen Mayhem Miller basically attacking you on Twitter over the past, you know, days, weeks, I that sort not. of thing? Is I know you guys have always had kind of a tense relationship, but he's kind of up in the game a little bit. Yeah. Just curious if you, if you haven't seen it, you may not have any thoughts. We just I get kind of aggressive it. in this. 
I haven't seen it. All I can say is he was found naked in a church and was arrested for vandalizing it. <laughs> Need I say more? I didn't Dave, think so. I'm slightly off east. In Winnipeg, when we were discussing about Steve Magatti and the lawyer situation, did you ever come back and speak to your lawyers about whether you could actually take a civil suit against a, a referee if you were unhappy with their comportment in the octagon against the commission? Um, did, you, did you investigate it at all? I did not. Okay. okay I did not. You. But, like I said before, the fighters have the right to go in with the commission and say, hey, listen, I, I, I want a different referee. They can do that. So the fighters have to be concerned. And after I talked about that, that was a, a very mixed mixed bag on, on Mazzagatti, which fucking blew my mind. Blew me away. So if other people aren't concerned about it, maybe I shouldn't be either. How much lobbying has, or if, if any, has uh, Silva done for either GSP or Jones? I know he, he denied he, he's called you and asked for Jones. But, um, how much well, I didn't say he asked for Jones. I said he, he called and wants a super fight. Go back and look oh, at that yeah. one. That's what I said. <laughs> but he didn't specify who. Um, did, did he specify? They didn't specify. Did yeah, we talked. Okay. You know, I told I told the media. I did a luncheon earlier this week and uh, told them these guys all get mad when I talk about what we talk about publicly to the yeah. media. You know, but this is this is the way this company is. It's the way it's always been. It's the way it always will be while I'm here anyway. Whatever we talk about, I'll tell you guys. But some stuff, it's like you know. And, and I know how Anderson is about it, but I can tell you this, Anderson Silva wants to fight a super fight either way. That way or that way. Hi, I'm over from the UK. Are you happy with the way that a UFC is exposed over there and any plans to increase it? Yeah, well, I've been working on that since 2002. Um, it's a very important market to us. You know, so much important that we, that we have an office in London and have since uh, like 2003. And, uh, you know, we're just fighting the fight, man, over there and in every other country. Is there an update on a live event there for the fall? It's been rumored for a long time now. Is that, I know the, the new TV partners are here this week and all that. What's Strangers. the rumor? Uh, Manchester in uh, November, I believe. I don't have the exact date. It's a pretty good rumor. Yeah? Yeah. Manchester, November sounds about right. It's a pretty good rumor. Just waiting to get it all signed. Yeah. <laughs> I'll help you out there, dude. Any, 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 any fights in particular? <laughs> any fighters you'd like to have to see that part? We still don't even have the, the thing, the deal done. We're still working on that, but no. I'm, you know, it'd be good to bring Bisbing back to Manchester. It's always fun. Hold on one second. Yeah, we're working there hard. Uh, Gary Cook, the guy who's running that territory for us, is uh, while we have International Fight Week going on here, Every guy that runs every uh, office from all over the world is here in town this week, and they've been in meetings since Monday. And, uh, yeah, so we're, we're working on it. The answer to that is yes. What did you say? About Brazil as well, like you guys just announced like more events until the end of the year. Uh, how, do you have any fights in mind for, like, particularly for these events? I don't. You know, uh, obviously the Brazilian market has been amazing for us. It's It's... Uh, you know, right there with the United States, the biggest market in the world, and uh, we're doing tons of work there. We're, we're going to do some really cool things there over the next several years. Babalu retired. Who? Babalu. Okay. What do you think when you think of Babalu? Uh, you know, Babalu is a guy who was, who, uh, was with us in the, in, in the early days. I always liked Babalu. He's a good guy. Yeah, no, I have no hard feelings. Nothing negative about Babalu. He's a great guy. You know, you know the, the negative thing was, you know, listen, this is the fight business, man. You know, this is the nice business, it's the fight business. And we have some guys that are super cool, and nothing bad ever happens. And we got guys that, you know, bad things happen sometimes, and decisions need to be made. But I have no hard feelings against Babalu. Dana, the George Zimmerman trial is going on. People get very uh, nervous when they hear terms, MMA terms, thrown around in this trial. You know about this trial, right? No. The trial in Florida with uh, the young boy who was killed, Kayvon Martin. Yeah, for Zimmer. wearing his hood and the guy, yeah, yeah okay. They say he, he used MMA, they think MMA terms are being used in the trial. Ground and pound and pound. They said he was ground and pounding him, basically. Like, it was an MMA-style fight before he was shot. Right. So 
what they say. Anyway, people get nervous when the MMA is brought up in that light on a mainstream level, in a negative light. Do you worry about that kind of stuff? I didn't even know it was happening. That's how worried <laughs> I am about it. I could give a shit. Let me tell you what. Ground and pound. That shit's been going on since <laughs> the day two men were put on earth. Somebody got on top and somebody was grounded and somebody was getting pounded, period. <laughs> it's fighting. You know, it's, it's not necessarily, it's an MMA term, but a guy on top of another guy punching him isn't about MMA. I mean, it's just, the world we live in, so much crazy shit. The, you know, one little thing happens and everybody goes crazy and wants to ban this and ban that. And, you know, I, I don't want to get too political here, but it's just like, you know, when, when a horrible thing happens with guns. Everybody's like, let's get rid of guns, let's stop selling ammunition. And then you look at what happens in Boston. There were no guns involved in Boston. When people want to hurt other people, they'll figure out a way to do it. Whether they use guns, they do this, they use their hands or whatever. It's just people like to like to label something and fucking attack something and it's just it's just the way society is today. It's been said that you uh, the UFC is trying to get into Russia. Uh, you said anything's possible. How possible is it that you get Fedor Emelianenko on the Ultimate Fighter? That's not possible. Uh, uh, Fedor is retired. And I don't want to talk about it right now because it's, it's... Me and Lorenzo are going to Russia. Soon? Yeah, soon. So that's how, that's how serious we are about Russia. We ain't going on vacation. So. For the vodka. Yeah. Dana, Dana um, there's two, obviously talk of Anderson Silva being compared to the greatest Brazilian sports of all time. I mean, the comparison with Pele recently, it's just incredible. He deserves it. How do you feel about being called the greatest promoter of all time, given what you've achieved already with the UFC? You call me that. Me? I'm you? calling you. All right. How do you feel about that when people start calling you that? I think I'm going to stop making fun of the clothes you wear here in Las Vegas. That's how good I feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate it. Um, I think that I am, uh, I am too young and have not accomplished all the things that I want to accomplish to, to be called something like that yet. And there have been a lot of great promoters in the day from, you know, from Don King. Tex Rickard. P.T. Barnum. Absolutely, P.T. Barnum. Yeah. Vince McMahon, you know, Vince McMahon uh, and, and many others. Uh, I am honored that you would say that and uh, I got a lot of work to do. You discussed the fighter pay scale of uh, taking away the bonuses and possibly being able to give that to the uh, lower tiered fighters. Uh, would you consider taking them away altogether? Well, or it fight of the it wasn't just the fight of the night bonuses; it was all bonuses. So were you going to take them away altogether there, there or of lesser? That fly around this company, a lot of bonuses, and the reality is, is the bonuses that are given are bonuses that are deserved. Okay. So the ones that you hear crying about not making money, now I'm gonna get crazy on you here, all right? We, we work in a business where we're as good as our last fight. Not just them, me too. The UFC, it, every time we do a fight, whether it's a pay-per-view, it's on TV or whatever, people make the decision to stay home on a Saturday night and not do anything else when there's movies, dinners, you know, spending time with the family, doing this, this. There's a lot of shit to do on a Saturday night. These people make a decision to stay home on a Saturday night and watch our show. We get a show with a bunch of guys that want to push against the fucking fence and stand there for 15 fucking minutes and try to squeak out a win. How many people do you think are going to tune in next Saturday? And if this keeps continuing, you become fucking boxing. Where guys are running around in circles, nobody fights, and, and you walk away going... This fight sucked, okay? The guys who are complaining about this are the guys that are not, that don't matter, okay? Now, that might sound fucking mean and harsh and why would nobody matter? Everybody matters. This is, we're getting, we're, we're in this fucking society now where everybody should win a trophy. No, everybody doesn't win a fucking trophy, okay? The guys who stand out and the guys who deserve bonuses, the guys who make it exciting, the guys who raise to the top are the guys who deserve the money. The guys that, you can have a fucking fight card where it happens, and this is what I tell these guys. You don't want to be the guy where, like, yeah, we went to the fights on Saturday night, and fucking Anderson Silva kicked the guy in the face, and the fight was, uh, 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 there were a bunch of other fights, too. I don't remember anybody's name or what fight happened. Be the fucking guy who stands out. If you're the guy that stands out, you're the guy that people want to see again. 
You're the guy that people want to spend money for. You're the guy that people want to buy tickets, pay-per-view, stay home on Saturday night. John Cholish is not that fucking guy and never will be. Okay? So now John Cholish is like, yeah, well, we didn't get paid enough. Oh, you didn't get paid enough. You know why you didn't get paid enough? Because you didn't fucking deserve it. That's why. How does that not make sense to anybody on this fucking planet? What do you okay. think about a guy like Tim Kennedy coming in who hasn't even fought for the organization yet, making well, that kind of comment? To be fair, I was at the luncheon the other day. I was on vacation at my place in Maine. I barely got cell service. I had no fucking internet. So the guys were hitting me with a lot of questions that I, you know, I didn't know this was going on. I didn't know about the term MMA. You told me something I didn't know today. Uh, you know, he came up. The, the other thing that happens is a lot of these questions are loaded questions. You, the media, believe it or not, it's fucking weird. You guys ask loaded questions. First fucking question he asked today. Anderson Silva's here, all the shit's going on. Hey, Tim, what do you think about the stupid shit you said? And now your boss is standing two feet away from you. You guys will ask loaded questions. And if I asked you a loaded question, I know what your answer would be. Do every one of you make enough money? Kevin Ioli, Ioli does, does, apparently. Yeah, I asked Kevin Ioli. He's making more money than he could possibly spend. The answer is fucking no. Anybody you ask if they're making enough money, the answer is no. Nobody's ever making enough money. Everybody needs more money and everybody wants to make more money. Are you making enough money? No. Uh, <laughs> Good answer. Yeah, nobody's making enough money. If you ask anybody that question, you know? And we live in, let's not forget we live in fucking America, okay? The land of opportunity. I feel like we're, we're in this fucking country where, where the American dream is like going away. Nobody has the American dream anymore. I am living the fucking American dream. I got into this thing, you know, uh, got these guys to invest, looked like it was going to happen, and now look at this fucking thing. I mean, look at this place and what we're doing now. This is the shit you should be fucking dreaming about. And every guy down there, whether you're Tim Kennedy, John Cholish, fucking uh, whoever else said anything, huh? Volkman, yeah. You should want to be fucking Anderson Silva. You should want to be, you know, John Jones. You should aspire to be the best. But what happens is, one day, especially in, in sports, right? In, in any uh, uh, professional sport where you're an athlete, the day of reckoning comes where you either are that guy or you are not. But even if you are not, maybe you're still a guy like, look how long Sam Stout has been in the UFC. Sam Stout hasn't won any world titles. He's not talked about as one of the greatest fighters ever or one of the top contenders or any of that shit. Sam Stout is a fucking animal who comes out and loves to fight. And every time he fights, he puts on an amazing show. Uh, Joe Lozon. Joe Lozon is not seen as the top guy in the division. He's not a world champion. You know how many people went fucking crazy when I said Joe Lozano was on the card? Because people love to watch him fight. If you are those... And, and, and Joe Lozano has won more fighter bonuses than, than I think anybody, okay? If you are that fucking guy, the system works for you, right? But if you are not that guy, and boo fucking who, you don't matter. And I'm sure that fucking sucks. And I'm sure it hurts. And I'm sure you want to fucking stand up and scream from the fucking rooftops. I'm pissed, and this isn't fair, and this isn't right. This is fucking life, dude. Get ready. Because every day when you get out of bed, life is standing right there to kick you in the fucking face. And you better be ready to fucking do something about it, John Cholish or anybody else. Everybody doesn't win a fucking trophy. Do you think fighters forget the sports until 20 years old? What? Do you think fighters forget the sports until 20 years old? 50 years, 80 years? That too. But but take that take that out of the equation, and that, that is true. We talked about this the other day. And you know, Kevin, I wish Kevin was here today. Where is he? And Kevin was like, well, you compare yourself to the NFL. And I said, Kevin, what I say is I want the UFC to be as big as the NFL or the biggest sport in the world, soccer, everything else. The NFL makes eight or nine billion of dollars in fucking television revenue. We are not the NFL. We're, we're, if you look at the numbers, we're more like Major League Soccer. But the fact is we've only had this company for 13 years but we've made tons of guys millions of dollars, you know? And I've read all the fucking articles where guys come out and say, oh, they, they've made them millionaires. A guy made a million dollars, they're a millionaire. Yeah, fuck face. If you make a million fucking dollars, you're a fucking millionaire, okay? How many people have the opportunity to go out right now in this market today and go make a million fucking dollars? 
How many people have that opportunity? We've only been here for 13 years. We didn't start making money till 2006, 2007. It's 2013. And when you look at the list of millionaires and the lives we've changed and the things we've done, yeah, I'm pretty fucking proud of it and it's pretty fucking impressive. I mean, let's be real here. Had to ask me that question today, didn't you? <laughs> she's so bored with it, she's like, all right, I'm yeah, fucking sick of yeah, listening to it. Yeah. <laughs> Why did I ask him this question? But is there anything new with Boston as far as uh, foreign fighters? Anything new on that? As far as what? The foreign fighters getting there and getting their SS security numbers and getting approved for Boston. Yeah, uh, we got that whole situation figured out. You know, we had to make some changes here and there. Was, you know, it, it was, uh, it was a, a speed bump we didn't expect, but... You know. In UFC compared to Bucks. What, UFC what? If you see compared to Bucks, have your fighters enough money? Are we does UFC compare to what? Make enough money? To the Bucks. To the if you compare UFC with the Bucks? Bo oh boxing? Bucks, boxing. Boxing. Boxing, okay. okay. If I compare UFC to boxing, yeah, our fighters make a lot more money. Because our money is spread throughout the entire card. You have guys that are mid tier and, and I'm working on that right now. I'm working on a whole fucking spreadsheet we're going through all this shit to, to, to fucking lay this thing out for dummies there's a lot of fucking dummies out there and we're going to lay it out for all the dummies other sports are filled with entitled other sports are filled with entitled prima donnas including boxing the ufc from top to bottom i'm talking anderson silva came velasquez and so on they don't seem to have that mentality how do you manage to have a roster that seems to be so humble and just uh, very approachable as opposed to these other sports First of all, that's that's the demeanor of the guys in the sport. Second of all, it's it's the way the company is 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 run too. This isn't that type of sport, and as long as I'm here, it will never be that type of sport. Um, at least the UFC. So, we, look at the Fan Expo this weekend. I mean, we we flew in more fighters than we ever have. Um, people are going to be hanging at pools with the fighters, hanging at the uh, Legacy. There's a free concert. All the fighters will be at the concert. Uh, and then uh, the expo. It's just it's part of the culture here. I love it. So this is why the UFC is the fastest growing sport in the world? I don't know if that's why. I think it's a combination of a lot of things, but it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt that, that the UFC is so accessible and, and the guys are such really good people. What would you ask me? So what are some of those, are all those changes that you picked out for Boston in that car? Can you tell us you know, Well, yeah. I mean, all the stuff that changed, you guys already know anyway. Uh, my Canadian guy, uh, Nick Ring. We had, to, we had to switch that fight out. We couldn't get him into Boston. And then the other guys, we, you know, we, we, we had to switch a few things and, uh, you know, do a lot of work in, in getting these guys the, the proper documentation and social security numbers that, that they needed down there, but we got it done. Is this, was that the most, uh, I say, draconian, but is there, is there any other state like that or it's where it's where you have to do this kind of temporary? No. And I think it was a law. It's a law there. That was kind of like... It was a law last time. But it was, ve but it was very loosey-goosey until the Boston thing happened, you know? And now they're really cracking down on it. And, you know, understandable. When, when things like happen like that, people get scared and, you know... What, what, what impact will it have in future events in, in say, Boston? Or does it, does it matter? going through this process. Well, it, 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 it wouldn't matter if you knew if you knew it up front. If we knew that ahead of time, you know, it's not a problem. We, we could, Their guys are saying that you guys didn't know. Give a shit what they say. Okay. We didn't know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If we knew, I, I mean, you guys have been dealing with this company for years. Are we unorganized? Are we, do we not do things the right way? We do everything the right way. If you look at all the things that we pull off, in other countries, we put on fights and we do business in countries all over the world. Do you know how much fucking work and, 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 and time and energy goes into that thing? If we knew that that was the case, we would have fixed it. But, but their thing, their, I don't care what they say. No, I'm just saying. They're wrong. I don't care. I just want to add this point, though. They're saying that this law was on the books all the time. Now, what I didn't understand if it was, they didn't enforce it before, if that's the case. Now they choose to enforce it. When you go back to, do you go back and not know how they I just out? answered that question. I said before it was a law, but it was like a, eh, you know what I mean? After the bombing happened, they're hardcore now, and they're enforcing that law, and uh, and I'm sure they're going to say, listen, it was a fucking law. 
and it was not enforced last time we were there. So you're damn right they're gonna say, oh, hey, yeah, they know about this shit. You know what I mean? But if I knew about it, I would have, I, I don't know the case. I don't know if this is a fact or not, because I really don't give a shit. We got it all fixed. Did everybody have their social security number the last fight we did in Boston? I don't know the answer to that question, but it's probably no. You know what I mean? They're like, they knew this law. We didn't know the law. We don't break the fucking law. We don't go around. We could go to New York tomorrow and do a fight. Tomorrow we can do a fight in New York. We can do it in the Indian Reservation, and we can do it in other, a couple other sneaky ways. We would never do that. We do everything by the book. So I understand people have to cover their ass. They're full of shit.